70 members of Edo State House of Assembly say they have impeached the Speaker, Francis Okiye. They also claimed to have impeached the newly inaugurated Deputy Speaker, Roland Asoro. The 17 lawmakers comprise 14 members whose seats were declared vacant and an additional three members of the Assembly. The 14 lawmakers were sworn in at a private location, after which they teamed up with the three others to impeach Okiye and Asoro. The new speaker, Honorable Victor Edoro, assured residents of the state that the lawmakers will not impeach the governor or any member of the executive, but contribute their quota to the development of the state. The new house annulled all decisions and actions taken by the Okiye-led House of Assembly and the suspension of the deputy clerk of the house. I don't mind I will want to reiterate that this assembly is not in any way out for impeachment of any executive member of this government. Instead, we are out to bring a better legislation for the people of the two states to complement the executive capabilities of the states. We are not here to impeach anybody. As penned out in the public space, I want to encourage the people of those states of peaceful coexistence in these states. And we record today The Edo State House of Assembly complex was invaded by hoodlums. I am using this opportunity to call on the Federal General Police, to call on the CP and those states to, without fail, make the Edo State House of Assembly ready without good norms tomorrow morning for sitting. Is there any support of the adjournment motion if we move and second it? Simply say aye. Aye. It is simply the ayes have it. The house shall rise. And we now have joining us Greg Ogiogwa, PDP member, to take a look at the implications of the ongoing Edo Assembly saga. Good to have you, Ogiogwa. Hi, hi, how are you doing? All right. Is it clear enough to conclude that the governor has lost his grip on the State House of Assembly with just four or five members on his side? Oh, what are you talking about? Um... The, the 14 lawmakers who claim that they have impeached the speaker were never sworn in. You know, they were never sworn in. This thing is not just a political issue. Let me tell you, you see, what they're, what they're actually trying to do is this. When the governor took off on his campaign tour, I don't know, he started to suck out the air and oxygen out from their campaigns and so on and so forth. So they had to pull a stunt like this to distract the public, to give the public the impression that they had some sort of thing to, to some, some sort of a plan that they could carry out. It's impossible. This is a case that is already in court. The 14 lawmakers' seats have been declared vacant. They've been declared vacant by the Speaker under the Constitution because they didn't sit for 180 days after the governor proclaimed the House open. That is a constitutional issue. You cannot override the Constitution by just by coming up with some policemen and deciding that and thinking that you can take over the House of Assembly and proclaim new things. 14 members have not sat for 180 days. It's a constitutional issue. There's nobody that, it's not the speaker, it's not the governor, it's the Nigerian constitution that says they didn't sit for 180 days after the proclamation of the house. Therefore, their seats are declared vacant. Mm. Those people do not have a right. And they do not have the right to call themselves lawmakers. They're not lawmakers. You see, they're not lawmakers. And, and, and with this, they're actually lawbreakers. Now, for them to go into the house or to attempt to go into a house when they know that the house is under renovation and everything, for them to do that just shows you pure mischief. Now, if they felt so sure, why haven't they done this before? Why didn't they do this uh, five months ago, six months ago? You know, for a whole year and a half since July uh, 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 um, 2019, 
These people have resisted every single call by their own constituencies to come to the House and be inaugurated and be sworn in and carry out their constitutionally mandated duties of representing the people that voted for them. They haven't done that. Instead, they were sitting in Abuja with Oshomole and trying to disrupt the orderly conduct of a you know, constitutionally mandated House of Assembly. It's gone to court. The court has said that the Speaker, uh, uh, Okie, is, was legally uh, 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 chosen, uh, uh, elected as Speaker. The House was legally inaugurated. So why did they not present themselves? They now come in from one funny angle and claim that they are, uh, 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 that they are now lawmakers when they have never been sworn in. Mm -hmm. They were not sworn in. So they're not lawmakers legally. So where do, where do they have the power to, to impeach the speaker from? These guys only did this thing as a distraction because they saw that the governor's campaign was, success, was succeeding so awesomely in I don't know. And, you know, the people were coming out and, 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 uh, and thanking him and showing uh, appreciation for good governance over the last three years. All right, let's so take a look to, at the issue of the police. You mentioned the police there, uh, Mr. Ogiogwa. Let's also look at, you know, the police supposed intervention. APC insists that it is not in charge of police. Uh, why do PDP fault their move to forestall violence then? What happened in Benway State? Have we not seen this thing happen in Benway State before? We saw it when Oshomole was national chairman of APC. He and uh, the late, uh, well, you know, I don't want to go into, into, into all those kind of details, but we know what happened in Benway State when they used the police to go and seal up the Benway State House of Assembly and tried to impeach the governor with only four or six members. It's, it's, a, it's a pattern that they have done before, so we can recognize it. It's no way I see, you know, the blind person. We know Oshomole's style. His handwriting is all over this, his fingerprints and everything. We have identified it to him, and so there is no situation that is going to come as a surprise to us. We know what he's trying to do, and we know what he, who you know, his cohorts are trying to do. What, what is the business of a former governor in the present governance of Edo State? What is his business? Is this what Lucky Binajon did to Osumbo? Is this what Osumbo did to him? What on, what on earth is his business? Why is he going around kneeling down and begging people for a man that he has so publicly castigated during the last elections? You have said everything about this man. You waived your immunity as, as governor at that time to say that this guy was a criminal, and so on and so forth. Then you turn around, and you start kneeling down and begging people, and you start sponsoring violence. I mean, what is the point of them if, if you believe that you have the mandate of the people, and you have the support of the people? What's the point of going to go and impeach the speaker, and going to go and try and, and, and make a play for government? Mm. That's what they're doing. I mean, let, let's move away uh, from that a bit, uh, because we, we can only say what, what we are very certain of, especially when you say he is sponsoring violence there. But how do you describe the governor and deputy uh, governor's rush to the venue? You know, some say it is executive interference. W what do you say? Uh, it's, it's called a uh, defense of democracy. It was not only the governor that went there. Everybody went there. The people of Edo State got up and went to defend democracy. That's what it is about. You can't bring policemen from Abuja and come and invade our House of Assembly. And for what reason? It was, was the House under any kind of, was, was, was there any kind of state of emergency declared in Edo State? Was the House incapable of carrying out its constitutionally mandated duties? No. So why did the members not come into the House normally and ask to be inaugurated and sworn in by the Speaker? Haven't done so, then they can then proceed and try and impeach him if they could. But no, they didn't do that. They wanted to come in secretly and then come and pull off his stunt with people who, have not, who are not even lawmakers. So those guys were actually trespassers. Mm -hmm. The 14 law so-called voters, they were trespassers in, that, in, in the premises. In a house that you know was undergoing renovation, the premises that you know was undergoing renovation. So they knew that the house was sitting in, a different, in, in the original uh, parliamentary quarters, or the original parliamentary uh, uh, building. They knew that. So they wanted to sneak in through the back and pull off a stunt like this, knowing fully well that he has no legal backing. They know that he has no legal backing. But These are people that their seats have been declared vacant. So what on earth were they trying to do? Just simply to distract us from the governor's awesome and overwhelming campaign. If That's I what may, they're trying to if do. If I, I may ask you, if I may ask you, what's your reaction to the supposed fumigation and renovation of the assembly, thereby impeding legislative business? What, what are they trying to say? In 2010, when Oshomole took over, and, uh, and we were trying to take over the power from uh, um, uh, the PDP at that time, Zakawanu Garuba was speaker. Oshomole had six members of the House of Assembly. You know, he took off the roof. 
He took off the roof of the House of Assembly. At that time, uh, uh, Philip Shaibu, who is now Deputy Governor, was a member of the House of Assembly. He was axed. He has axe wounds all over his body now as a result of that attack. You know? And, you know, Ochomole removed the roof. This is not even a matter of the executive now removing the roof. It's a matter of the House, because you know for, for a fact that the House had been uh, uh, unoccupied. The premises had been unoccupied for a while. All the civil servants under grade level 12 had been sent home. All the legislators were not sitting on and so on and so forth. So the place was already going, I mean, it had not been renovated for, I think, uh, uh, since 2010, when Oshomole took off the roof. Now, 10 years after, you are saying that that place, the National Assembly is undergoing renovation and, they, uh, and so on and so forth. So why shouldn't the uh, House of Assembly undergo renovation? Why now? The it question is, why now? It didn't start last week. Oh, it didn't start last week. It didn't start today. It, 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 it's been undergoing renovation for about, I think, I think now, almost a month and a half. Large premises. You know, the, the, uh, uh, quarters, uh, working quarters for, for the, server, the civil servants members of the Legislative uh, Service Commission and so on and so forth, their offices and all that. And you know very well that even the Speaker had COVID-19. Even our Speaker was one of our, in fact, it was our, I think it was our index case in Edo State. So anybody that says that why now is being ignorant of the fact that we do have a pandemic on ground, we have a pandemic in hand. The fact that we're, 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 we're campaigning and that we're looking to win these elections doesn't mean that we want to risk the lives of our people. And that's the thing that they are doing on the other side with impunity. They don't care about the people. But government has to care about the people because All that right. is its first and sacred duty to care about, to protect the lives and properties of the people. Mm -hmm. So even if you do have uh, a political uh, uh, climate, environment, uh, campaigns going on, we still have to make sure that the people are protected from this pandemic. If the people are not alive, who's going to vote and who are we going to govern? All right, Greg Ogyogwa, I think that's where we are going to leave it in the interest of time. We'll be following up to see how things unfold. And do keep safe out there. Thank you, Amaka. You keep safe as well. God bless you. God bless Thank Nigeria. You.